Singapore is home to one of the largest fleets of vessels in the world. We're talking about this, this, and this. But what do some of these vessels do? This is Tommy. He works at one of the marine service providers in Singapore, which means... We charter our vessels out for marine operations all around Asia. We own a fleet of 70 vessels performing different roles. Examples would be passenger ferries like our Tekong ferries, which are used to transport army boys from mainland Singapore to Pulau Tekong for their BMT training. We also have launchers, tugs, utility crafts performing different marine operations like towages, transportation of cargo, and even used for land reclamation works. And where do these vessels come from? We make them right here in the shipyard. Different agencies, different organisations have different needs for marine operations. So for us, we are able to customise vessels to best suit these needs. Maybe for example, like the Kong Ferries, we designed her to be able to embark and disembark passengers as safely and as quickly as possible. Not more than five minutes. From the way the aisles are planned, the doors are laid out, to make it as fast as possible. Yeah, so we do maintenance work on these vessels in our ship, yeah. Every year, they will have to go through mandatory annual inspections. This is on top of the usual repair work they have to do. So my grandfather was actually a boatman. He was plying goods along the Singapore River. And my father is in maritime, so a lot of my childhood was spent on board vessels. I remember when I was younger, our captain would piggyback us up to climb up the pilot ladder onto ships. So I grew up with kind of like the sea in my blood. But I wouldn't say I was dead set on coming to maritime. See, it was a gradual process over the years. When I studied uh, finance in SMU, a lot of my friends, they went into banking. For me, I decided uh, in university that I would go back to the family business and I would go back to shipping. I think initially it was quite tough because I was starting a new in an unfamiliar industry. I always had a hard time to figure out the port and starboard that I need to, to manually get the hang of it and sometimes a lag time of a couple of seconds. I think my family, my colleagues, they're very helpful in uh, guiding and teaching me. I think I got a lot of strong support from the maritime ecosystem. Gradually, things got easier. Like right now, I even have my license to, to steer a own boat. Wow, can you steer a boat by yourself now? Uh, well, if you trust me not to crash it. A lot of people have the misconception about maritime that it mainly consists of people from the older generation. But increasingly, we're also seeing a lot of young faces from diverse backgrounds joining the industry. A lot of good friends who are in the company right now were actually my army buddies. I think the industry has changed tremendously uh, over the years. Organisations such as the Maritime Airport Authority of Singapore and Singapore Maritime Foundation has also helped companies like us to succeed. MPA has also been providing funding support to allow maritime companies to digitalise their processes. Now we are able to work faster and more productively. So tell me, what is something memorable about your job? Working in the office, you know, we get to plan vessels, we get to work on contracts and tenders. I think nothing beats the experience of being right out at sea. When the sun is about to set, I went to the deck and look all the way to the horizon, it's completely clear. We are like one vessel in the middle of a big sea. I felt small and I also felt proud to be part of this bigger industry. From even the clothes that we wear, to the food that is placed on our table. Most of these uh, were all carried to us via the sea. So what I hope to see for maritime in the future is a lot more young faces joining this fibre industry that is rapidly evolving.